Hello everybody, my name is JT Bear and thank you for joining me here on my small farm channel for another episode in the Permaculture Pirate Series. What you see behind me are wild hawthorn berries and uh, today we're going to grab hopefully half a dozen or so of these from a little further in the brush so that we're not taking away from the ones people in town aren't picking anyway. Unfortunately, we noticed these because they're so abundant and nobody has touched them. We did a fair bit of online searching and uh, double checked with Fuzzy who is getting schooled from some very local individuals on, well, edible plants and wildlife around here. Hawthorne it is. Hawthorne is coming home. This is all part of what I've been saying for so many of these episodes about food should be free. Look around, see what you can find in your environment to kind of just add to your property. It adds value in the long term should you need to sell it. And it adds value right up front because it's edible. So yeah, if I don't like it, there's always going to be chickens in there. Let's hike into the bush. Oh, hark, I hear a bear. Rawr. Did you step on it? Mm, no, it's right here. That was fun. Rawr and stuff. All right, so we just came through the brush instead of going around like normal people, but hey, it is what it is. <clears throat> I thought there was a little grove of these inside turned out to be all wild roses. We know how I feel about roses. So, of course, the hawthorn berry is related to a rose. Joke's on me there. But underneath these nice large bushes, clearly very well established, we found a nice tiny one. So that's going to be our first takeaway friend today. And hopefully it will survive this kind of eh, rude environmental shift. All right. Bit of an angler. Okay, so we discovered two things. First of all, great little rock for the collection back home. Second, it's another one of those things where the roots trying to go really, really deep. This poor thing, this much of it was in the ground. No offshoots at all. I'm gonna have to cut this very short when I plant it and very much hope for the best. I am starting to have some concerns about how well this project is gonna work. I've heard propagation through cuttings works well. So if this doesn't do it, I've got another option available. So, we're gonna put this in some soil because it's already hurting. See if we can find another one and hopefully get some better roots. All right, so lucky for me, the muse has incredible eyes and spotted a selection of three here. We're gonna go for these two in the back that are nice and close together. Just in case anybody's walking along the edge, we're not leaving a bunch of gaping holes. But while we're here, let's take a look at a few of the characteristics that show us this is in fact a hawthorn. Uh, on the leaves. Let's find a good one. These ones here. The leaves on this particular hawthorn, very, very distinct compared to uh, basically all the other vegetation around them. And it is a hawthorn for a reason. If we look just under those leaves, we've got quite the little spike on there. So if you're going looking for these, that is your clue and that is also your fair warning. This bush is out to get you back. So, on that previous one we discovered this is a long-rooted bush. I'm quite concerned. So taking these two together will hopefully provide us a better chance that at least one of them will make it. Kind of looks like the roots are heading this way. Kind of looks like that one's going out. Really have no idea how this is going to work out. But here we go. 
Maybe we'll find treasure while we're at it. Lucky. So this is quite interesting. I noticed the roots on this where they do sprout out. Sorry, I'm a little winded. It's kind of a fight for this one. They are very thorn-like as well. Straight off on either side and straight out. But at least with this one, we were able to harvest some, some side root material. I'm much more hopeful this one will survive. I think this is the one we're going out front. And then, this one here also seems to have a little bit of side root attached. And a little further up, we've got some what I would call fingerling roots. So hopefully it will also live for us. I was hoping to get a lot more plants than I think I am going to get today. But this is turning out to be far more dangerous and tedious than I had ever imagined. So, yeah, we'll get back to you at the end of this with our totals. So far we're looking at three and uh, just see how it goes. All right, folks, well, it looks like three is going to be our total number of uh, trees slash bushes, whatever these things officially grow up to be gathered today. They go really, really deep and uh, frankly, I just wasn't prepared for this kind of fight. If you're going for this particular type of hawthorn berry, I recommend you take one of those hand claws with you. But we've got two very nice examples in this one bucket, both with at least a little bit of side root. And of course, that one with the good substantial side root that we showed you a minute ago. And then of course, we have our first one here that I am very, very worried about. But we'll take it, we'll plant it in the back in the new barrier, bear area. That's so hard to say. And uh, berry area. Ah, it's hard to say because I said it wrong. Anyway, we're going to take these home, plant them back there, and we'll bring you along for that. So stick around. Two seconds. Got the kids tucked in the back of the Jeep. Time to go home. So about two minutes to make the hole a little deeper from where we had those, I'm going to get it wrong, lilacs. Yep. The lilacs that didn't take. And now... We have the hawthornberry. Delightful, a little pokey. So, a couple of Saskatoons, those we can eat. Lilacs, those are just plain pretty. Hawthornberry, those we can eat, those we can feed to the chickens. Goji berries, in theory, if they ever give fruit, we can eat, we can feed to the chickens. It's a nice, pretty, and edible front hedgerow. Which leaves us two more of our freshly acquired hawthornberry trees to go put back in the bear area. So, let's go. So we've got these two in the ground now, fairly close to each other. I've uh, filled the bottom of the hole with some really rough, not even really close to composted material. Sorry about the wind, can't hold the wind. Backed it in with the soil that came with these things in the first place. And now I've just gone to get some of the charcoal that was in the corn patch. So we're gonna give it just a little bit more top dressing to help it settle in to its new life. Evidence of corn. And we are going to soak all three of these with all the water we can tote. And that project is pretty much done. The real thing is to check back on it in the spring, see if it lived. Doesn't look like the goji's doing very well beside it right now. But I'm hoping again in the spring it'll come back to its uh, usual vigor and in fact do even better than it has. Because it's this location is going to be nice and sunny for both of these types of berries. All right. Thank you guys for joining me today and uh, I will see you for sure in the next random farm video and definitely when we go out to get those raspberries as I promised quite a few videos ago because those are going up against the back fence. Take care everybody.